Ranger Suarez is in another zone right now. And Bryce Harper might be getting there as well. We'll talk about it all on Phillies Post Game Live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. 5 nothing Phillies. And there is a man who is calling for Ranger Suarez to be in the Cy Young Award competition. His name's Ricky Paul Botalico. And you, you've got it right on the money, the way this guy, 112 pitches I'm not thrilled about, but that's another story. Yeah, you're not going to be thrilled about that. I think he may have gone a little bit over what he is normally used to. Obviously, it was a, uh, it was a career high for him. But, man, this guy was dealing. Uh, 12 ground ball outs. I mean, let's start with that. 12 ground ball outs, eight strikeouts. I mean, that's 20 of his 27 outs right there. The, the only three outs that I know of that were recorded in the outfield was a fly out to left, a fly out to uh, to right, and then the the single that was that marched through uh, the runner out at second yeah. base. This was masterful. I mean, this guy could live all around that strike zone, but nothing dead center. That's exactly what you want from a pitcher. If, if he can go all around that strike zone, go and change ups in his nasty little curveball that he was throwing tonight, man, he, he's in pretty good shape and I still back what I said because of it you should you should he might be he could be if he continues to pitch like this be right there in that conversation for the Cy Young at the end of the season let's go to John Cruck right now at Citizens Bank Park call tonight's game with Tom McCarthy John you look at this you were talking about it at the end of the game he, he might not throw a hundred but it really doesn't matter because he pinpoints those pitches and when you look at this staff now John Zach Wheeler Aaron Nola Ranger Suarez I don't know who's won 1A, 1B, whatever, but they got a staff. Yeah, and, you know, not, 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 let's not get, get ahead of ourselves here, but, you know, you go into postseason with those three guys and, uh, you know, you got a shot at, at winning any series. But, uh, you know, I, I love what Ranger said to us after the game. He, It wasn't about him. He gave credit to his defense, how good it was, and it was. He gave credit to JT. He said, best catcher in baseball. Why should I ever want to think about shaking him off? Which is, I guess, pretty smart. Seemed to work tonight real well for both of them. But, uh, you know, to get the runs early, though, was that big help to Ranger. But I tell you what, man, every time he goes out, you, you just you just love watching him compete. You know, he might have a, gr a great game like he did tonight. He might have a really good game like he has, you know, his previous couple starts. And, you know, every once in a while he might have a bad one, but you still love watching him go out there and compete because that's what he does. He competes and he pitches. How nice is it to see two, three, four in the lineup have a lot to do what was going on offensively tonight, especially, I think, Bryce Harper. I think if he breaks out, I mean, this team will take off. Yeah, you know, like I told you guys last night, you know, he's the least guy I worry about because, you know, he has that, that – uh, you know that flair for the dramatic the the you know i want all the attention not the attention but i want all the pressure on me i want to be up with the big at bats the pitch clock this guy doesn't even need a pitch clock he gets the ball back and he fires it in there what kind of stamina does that take that's incredible yeah i think that's that's why it makes it so like unimaginable that someone can throw a, a complete game because it's get it throw get it throw the only rest they have is in between innings and you know, the Phillies scored five runs, but they did it all in three innings. So those other six innings, there wasn't a lot of traffic on or, or five innings for the Phillies. There wasn't a lot of traffic on base for them. They only got six hits. So it wasn't like Ranger had a lot of time to, like, go up in a tunnel and get, get in the cooler air, or, you know, have something to drink, to towel off, whatever. They didn't have a lot of time, but... Man, that pace was pretty good. It was unbelievable. All right, Great Johnny. tempo. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you tomorrow. It's exciting. Two games right. above 500 for the first time this season. And count. Yes! They haven't won anything yet, but I, I have a sense. I have a feel for it. All right, my friend. Thanks <laughs> a lot, Mike, John Michael, you have no sense. I, you're right. You're right. About, that's why I'm sitting here. I second here. that. <laughs> All right, bud. We'll talk to you tomorrow. John Crook joining us from the ballpark. And Ricky Bo, you look at this team now. They've won two straight. They've won three of four. They've won five of seven. They've won their first home series of the season. I know the competition's a different story. You, yes. get, you do have to take it in context, but this is a good thing. It doesn't matter. You're still playing in a major league ball club, and you still got to kick their butts. I mean, isn't that what it's all about? Uh, you know what? Sometimes, you know, think of it. Think of it this way, Michael. If these Rockies came in here, took the first two games, how would you feel? 
Uh, yeah, real low. Below do you, do the you understand what I'm saying? These are teams that you should beat, take care of business, do exactly what you're supposed to do. And I, and I just want to get into Ranger in the, in the pitch clock thing. Why Ranger doesn't need a pitch clock is because he has a really good idea of what he wants to do with every hitter. He has no thought process whatsoever except for, I'm going to throw this next pitch with conviction. Isn't that what you want from every one of your starters? Isn't that why – let me ask you, watch this. Yeah, yeah. Do any of these, you watch some pitchers out there and mm -hmm. you get that anxious feeling. You yeah. don't get that with Ranger, no, you, do you? You feel like you he's get in an complete idea. control. Yeah, you get an idea that he knows exactly what he's doing every time out there. And there's never any lag. There's never any situation where he's like, oh, I'm going to take a long time here because. You know, I got to think about things. No, he puts into his mindset what he wants to do. He studies beforehand. Then he just executes his plan. If his plan doesn't go well, you don't see him out there changing up what he's doing out there. He continues to battle. He continues to go after hitters. But tonight was special. I mean, in all honesty, I was getting a little nervous because that bottom of the eighth inning went a little bit longer than you would like with your starting pitcher, especially this early in the season. That's the only thing that I would change about this game. I don't mean anything against the, anybody uh, on, the, on that staff. Mm -hmm. The flair that he has. Oh, the yes, vibe right. that he has. The first you know, ground the ball. The swagger that he the has. The first ground ball hit to him today. Yeah. Uh, by uh, the way, I great. want you to remember this feeling that we have about Ranger because if this guy was on another team, we'd be absolutely livid with him. You're right. You're right. <laughs> we would be absolutely. The way he feels the ground ball and just kind of sits there and looks over at first and then fires over there. I mean, hey, it, it's great that he's a Philly. I'll just put it to you that uh, way. I'm with you 100%, my friend. Guess who else is? Rob Thompson. Here's his manager post game. I'll take your Ranger out at all. That was his last hitter. As a matter of fact, I, I mean, um, complete game shutout. It's important. It's important to the player, but uh, keeping him healthy is important as well. And that, that would have been his last hitter. Given how he was pitching earlier in the game, did you have a sense that he might go the distance? He's how, he was getting quick outs. I mean, they were swinging early, and, and he was getting a lot of soft contact. And his stuff was really good, and his command was really good. And, um, yeah, it, it was, you know, after four innings, I think he was at, what was he at, 44 pitches or something like that. So um, that's pretty efficient. So it, you felt like he was going to get deep unless something crazy happened. Overall, this beginning to the season, four starts out, we talked about how he was better set up for success having a full camp. How much do you think stuff like that's playing into? Well, oh, I, I think everything has to do with that, you know, being healthy and knock on wood and, and um, you know, coming and having a full spring training. And he did some, a lot of work in the off season um, during his catch play. He, he um, did something a little bit different. He, he was usually just plays catch. But he was actually throwing his pitches while he was playing catch. So maybe that has something to do with it, too. But um, he was just, he's just been tremendous all year. If you were to take that another step forward, you know, what can that do for uh, your team over the course of six months? With rain? If he, if, he just, if he becomes a guy who you can depend on for 30 starts at a. Yeah, I mean. You got a guy who's was he had four starts so far this year, and every one of them's been really good. So it's, I mean, um, if he stays like this, he's going to have a great year. Was there any particular pitch tonight that really jumped out? There? Uh, the curveball was really effective, and left on left changeup was really effective. And his fastball, he was throwing it wherever he wanted. So, so after the eighth, he's at 89. Do you even say anything to him, or is it just kind of like? I just I went down and just made sure he was all right, and he was. He's and pretty stress-free, 89 pitches. So you know I felt pretty good about him going back out there, because the most he's gone is six innings. So now you add on three ups, it's not really the pitches. It's the pitches and the ups, and and but it was stress-free. So I felt like pretty confident sending him back out. He gets an extra day. Right? Yeah. Brandon Marsh play developing if that ball was hit. Was yeah, we made a couple of really good plays defensively. Bone makes a great play. Marsh, great throw. Uh, really heads up play by Harp at first base. Um, you know, continuing to play after after he was safe at first base. And Bone filling in at third base to get the out. So um, that got us out of that inning. And that, again, that uh, doesn't 
add on pitches to Rangers. So uh, a lot of good things tonight. You know, Harper hitting the home run, JT's home run. Uh, didn't have many hits, but we capitalized on them, so that was good. Uh, well, he, you know, uh, he got a hanging breaking ball for the double. Um, and then I think the last at bat, was, I think, was a fastball, I think. And he just he, he turned it around. So uh, he's, like I said, he's been hitting the ball hard a couple of times a night. He just hasn't had anything to show for it. But tonight he did, so it was good. I mentioned some of the defensive plays. Ranger himself made, like, four of them double play. Uh, how important is it for him to be able to feel this position like he does? And why do you think he ends up with so many of those balls back to him? Um, well, just because of the movement, he gets in on people. Um, you know, the sinker end up, uh, to the lefties and the cutter in on the righties, and he, he gets a lot of jam shots, and they end up being right back at him, and he's a tremendous athlete. I mean, you know, Wills won the um, gold glove last year, but, you know, you could say Rangers right in that area. He's in the conversation. Have you ever been around a pitcher as, like, yeah, when I say stress-free, like I'm not sure if Rangers ever had any stress in his life. So, um, yeah, he's he's really something. Right? He's just got ice in his veins. He really does. He's he's phenomenal that way. Is that the best performance you've ever seen him pitch? I think so. I think he's had one more um, complete game shutout. Um, I can't recall it. Yeah. I, I I don't remember the game, but um, but this was this was really fun to watch. I wouldn't be surprised at some point, even possibly this year, that Ranger wins a Gold Glove. You had talked about him from the outset of this season as a potential Cy Young Award candidate. We knew he he's been good. He's now 28 years old. What was it about his preparation, his spring, anything that I, that hit you that you thought? is going to make him this good this year? I think a couple things. I think, number one, he was in spring training on time. If you remember, he's had visa issues in the past. He's had trouble getting to spring training. He had the injury last year with the WBC, and I thought that kind of pushed him back a little bit last year. This year, you get the spring training. First time I saw him in spring training, I said, this dude's going to have a good year. It's, it's just one of those things where you feel very comfortable about somebody that's coming in and has had some success, and they're still growing. You know that they're going to take that next step at some point. I think this is his next step. And when you put him in there with Aaron Nola, who had his past three starts have been amazing, and Zach Wheeler, yeah. who unfortunately doesn't have a win yet, though he's pitched well, that's a step. Christopher Let, Sanchez. Let's uh, just his, call them a power trio right now. They sure I mean, are. I could look at those three and say they all could pitch. They all pitch in different ways. I mean, when you really think about it, and they're all very good at their craft. Yeah, I thought range did the ball great, man. Um, you know, him just go out there and, and pound the zone, really. I thought he was ahead all night. Um, just really, really good all night long. And well, the defense played well also. Um, offense, you know, scored enough runs to win. And, um, yeah, I mean, can't say enough about range. What would it do for you guys if he takes another step forward this year and is, you know, right there as, like, like that number three guy? Yeah, I mean, I think people might not like it. I think he's the best three in the game. You know, I think uh, – just the way he goes out there and competes every time he's out there. Um, just his starts. I mean, every time he goes out there, we got a chance to win, just like the other two guys that go out there in front of him. Um, so it's just a lot of fun to watch. I mean, you guys saw in the postseason as well. He has no heartbeat. You know, he's a guy who just goes out there and pitches and has kind of that same plan and same demeanor every day and um, really good on his feet as well, you know, fielding the ball and helps himself out a lot. Um, so just a lot of fun to, you know, play behind that and, He's always competing and trying to be better. So, have you ever been around a guy that has no heartbeat, like like another pitcher that has like? I mean, Wills, has, Nola, yeah. Strasburg, Scherzer, Jordan Zimmerman. I mean, I can go on. I mean, I play with, I've played with a lot, a lot of good guys. Um, been around a lot of good pitchers, and um, you know, kind of the same demeanor. Um, I've been very fortunate to play, you know, with guys like that, and um, you know, it's a lot of fun to to see um, what these guys can do and the caliber of player they are and um, you know I just don't think they kind of make them like them anymore you know really getting to the seventh inning and grinding through or getting through the eighth inning or you know a lot of guys are you know in the minor leagues and things like that are throwing three and a half innings and you know getting out of the game and you know it's uh it's kind of tough for the game you know so when you have guys that are valuable like that they're going to get paid and 
you know, they throw 200 innings, they're going to get a lot of money. So um, I think Ranger's going to be one of those guys, and you know, very, uh, very fortunate to have him on our side.